Hey, so amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official, like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, everything from highlights and stats. You know that we got to run it back. Whether on the field or the court. You know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire. Uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go. What's good? What's cooking? What's popping? All right, this is your boy Live Wire Sports Media, and you know, I got to bring y'all some Commander news. Some, you know, some great stuff. Uh, which the Commanders will be playing preseason game tomorrow um, against um, the Miami Dolphins, which they had all the journey practice with the Miami Dolphins yesterday. Now. As always, our number two overall pick, Jaden Daniels, JD5, Mr. Him, himself, impressed in another joint practice, as always, um, throwing five touchdowns. Five touchdowns yesterday, you know, which was, I mean, something to be seen. Um, he actually had, uh, let me... Let me make sure I give you, you know, the content the way it's supposed to be. Ha ha. As always, as always, as always. So, yeah. So, um, as I was saying that Jalen Daniels impressed yesterday, he lit up the Dolphins defense in the red zone drills. He threw five touchdowns, including two to Terry, beating Kendall Fuller, the former Washington commander himself once, and then Cardo Kahu later on. Now, it goes to show that Kendall Fuller did get an interception in that joint practice. Now, it didn't say um, if it was from Jaden Daniels, but I think Jaden Daniels threw two interceptions in that game, and one was a tip pass because, according to David Harrison, who hosts Locked On Kane, I mean, Locked On Commanders, and now he writes for SI Sports. Um, and someone I had on my show um, last year, uh, he said that the second interception in turn uh, on the teams this year comes on the ball that um, he sent to Tur uh, Cole Turner, who lost control of it as he was hit from behind. The ball popped up, and Dolphins DB came down with it. Didn't see who the DB was with that that came in with an interception. So, with that being said, um, I mean, you got to think about it. Cole Turner, been, he's another Ron Rivera hire. Um, he's someone that we had high hopes for. You know, I like him because his size and speed, but he's never been able to stay on the field. He's been injury riddled. Um, he's, now that we got Benson up, who looks like every bit of what we've been looking for in a tight end, and he showed out in his first preseason game against the Jets. Cole Turner, he could be down in the depth chart. Now, we did release Amari, uh, Amari Rogers, which we should have kept him because he, I mean, his upside is tremendous. I really love Amari Rogers. But nonetheless, now Cole Turner don't kick it in. Because to be honest with you guys, a lot of Ron Rivera hires, they fight for position, man. They fight for roster spots. It's not a lot for them. You know what I'm saying? And this is where you really have to focus in on this new regime because you got to think about it. Ron Rivera probably, and whoever the offensive coordinator was, you know last year we had every enemy and the, the players were screaming. They was getting coached hard. They, Airbnb the was yelling at them, cussing at them. Now this year, they feel like they deserve to be given a position. I mean, this is professional football. You either man up or man out. That's just, that's just how it is. You either man up or man out, and nothing going to be given to you. Everything is a competition. They, this new regime with Dan Quinn and – um, Cliff Kingsbury, they want to see what you made of. Nobody's going to give you something. If somebody beat you out, 
and you don't start in the beginning of the season, guess what? That's on you. That's not on the coach. You know what I'm saying? So Ron Rivera's not here no more. And all of this whining and crying, it can't be done. Now, I'm going to show you one good highlight because Jaden Daniels, man, I've been saying this ever since going back to college. Jaden Daniels, to me, spins the ball like no other. The boy could spin the ball. He could throw the ball. He could throw the fade. He's very precise how he throws the ball, where he wants to go to throw the ball. And like I told, like I said before, it's going to be very, very hard to actually get a read on him. You know, same thing with, you know, Caleb Williams over in Chicago. He's looking good, too. Drake May had a good highlight reel last night for the Patriots. You know, unfortunately, J.J. McCartney going to be out for the season with the meniscus tear in his knee, but, hey, it's what it is. But J.J. Daniels, man, to me, is going to, is going to be – everything that we wanted, everything we look for. We've been looking for a franchise quarterback for years. You know, we've been having these patch quarterbacks here and there. And Jaden Daniels, is, is a, he's coming in. He's got the right offensive coordinator that's going to give this offense some joke. We just got to make sure we have the pieces to make sure Jaden Daniels becomes successful. Now, I'm going to show you this one test, um, this one, touchdown play that he did to Terry. And uh, Terry, I'm, I'm going to say this about Terry McCloy. We've been beating Terry McClellan up last year. And a lot of my constituents that I have, you know, talked to and stuff saying, oh, well, Terry's not a number one receiver. He might not be a number one receiver. He, but he's damn sure is a very productive wide receiver. Because out of all the quarterbacks we done had, this guy comes in and puts thousand yards up for four straight years. You can't, you can't, you can't knock that. So here's a highlight from Jada Daniels to Terry McLaurin. Just imagine, and matter of fact, doing red zone touchdowns, two of them went to Terry. So just imagine what that combination going to look like. And then, like I, I did a you know video a couple of days ago about Monte, is Brian, he's looking good in practice as well. You know, and so it's, it's going to be challenging So and everything. Now, Kendall Fuller did spoke on um, Jan and Daniels and what he's seen with, from him and stuff like that. So I'm going to let y'all guys take a listen chance to see their rookie quarterback and Jaden Daniels. Your thoughts on the young fella? Um, I like him, man. Just as I haven't watched the tape yet, but just how he carries himself. He looks like a pro. It looks like he has an edge. Um, look like he trusts in his ability a lot. Um, I mean, true. Even just looking on YouTube, social media, you, I heard about him checking a play in the first preseason game. And to be able to have that confidence as a rookie to go out there and play football. Because at the end of the day, a lot of times you rely on X's and O's, and then sometimes you just got to play football. So um, I'm excited to compete against him on Saturday and hoping that he has a, a good future. And that's watch the commanders, uh, Kendall Fuller, you know, talking about, you know, what he sees and what he likes from Jaden Daniels, and which, you know, you got to respect it. You have to respect it. You know, no matter what, how you feel about the situation, you got to respect it. Um, now, Dan Quinn did. Um, talked about a number of things. He talked about how they're going to rev up things for the DBs. Uh, he's talked about how they're going to put them in certain situations in this game. It's going to, it's not going to be all fun and games. You know, it's going to be where they're going to have to, they're going to have to really tighten up. You know, they're going to really have to tighten up in, in this game. You know, because you're only going to have one more preseason game left before the season be here. So that's something you really have to pay attention to. Now, and also, Dan Quinn also talked about the wide receivers as well because John Klein reported on, say that, and this is per Nikki Javala also as well, saying that Dawson has not emerged. Sakarius has been very consistent all summer. That's something to look at with Jahan Dawson. Can, now, he did 
had some catches in the joint practice um, yesterday, but I want to see what he's going to look like um, come to, um, come tomorrow night. So that's going to be something something to see. Now, Nikki Javala did also say that Dan Quinn said that they are in the middle of a search for number two wide receiver. That could be De'Ami Brown. That could be Monterey. Um, Carl um, Bryant. That could be Pringle. That could be Dotson. But you can use Dotson in other ways. You know what I'm saying? You can roll him in the slot. Matter of fact, Dotson could take over the role where Karen Samuel left off at. You could run him in a slot. You could have De'Ami Brown or Martavis deep with, along with Terry. You got tight ends there. There's a lot of different things you could utilize Dotson, but Dotson will have to have the confidence for him to overcome some of this. You know, not thinking that, hey, I'm a star, you know, I'm a star in this league. So it's going to be tough for the young um, second year wide receiver or well, third year wide receiver. Um, but like Dan Quinn said, a lot of players are in the mix. He's mentioned the good camp that Olami Zakaris has had. And that's going to, this guy is trying to make a roster spot. And if he he feel like he can beat you out, he's going to beat you out. And so let, I'm going to let y'all listen to what Dan Quinn had to say about the wide receivers as well. The wide receiver two search. I would say we are right in the middle of it. And so um, you'll see a lot of guys in today. You'll see two, three, four, five. There's a lot of guys that are really battling. I've been uh, really impressed with Alameda. And uh, I thought he's had a really strong camp. Um, looking forward to getting um, Luke some extra work into here, Jahan, uh, Diami. So that's where we're at. And then the special teams is going to have a factor in that as well. So um, you got to think about Dan Quinn has a plan. This, this team roster has been evaluated all summer long, all last year. Uh, between Adam Peters and Josh Harris. And then they felt comfortable bringing Dan Quinn in. You got Kingsbury in with his um, explosive offense. And they want to make sure Jaden Daniels get hit the ground running. They don't want him to have uh, a bad season start up. They want him to – they want the skies to be limited. They want this team to take off. They're not looking for this team to stumble back into – the first round of the playoff. They're trying to get somewhere. And Dan Quinn is searching for it, and he's looking, he's seeing it. And if they got to continue to bring guys in, now there's rumor that they was the commanders were looking at Tony and Brown. I don't know how much true that is, and I ain't trying to go into all of that, you know. But if they feel like they could continue to bring guys in because they don't feel confident where the, the, the number two wide receiver spot is at, that's what they got to do. I'm all for it. I'm not here to say, well, you making excuses for these guys. The excuses and shit is over with with these guys right now. The only one that's out there producing like he's still a, like he's the number one receiver is Terry McLaurin. And you see Deion Brown starting to emerge. You know what I'm saying? And if you let Montavious Bryant come in and get signed and take your roster spot, hell, you deserve to be cut. You deserve to be traded. Who knows what's going on? Hell, for all I know, Jahan Dawson could be uh, in the mix of tra trade talks with, um, what's the guy named, uh, Brandon Ayuk? Who knows what may happen? But I do want Deshaun, um, Jahan Dotson. You know, I like Jahan Dotson. I think he's very talented. I think he's very skilled. But I think he he's going to have to go out there and prove to Dan Quinn and Cliff Kingsbury that, hey, I want to be on this team. I want to be a part of this team that I feel like I deserve a spot. Do whatever it takes to make the team. If you got to run punts, kickoffs, hell, play the slot, you know what I'm saying, play outside, inside, whatever you got to do, show them that you're willing to do it. Don't get, into, um, get inside your head. That's the thing I'm looking at for the most part. So, again, we'll see. We'll see with Jahan on Saturday and see how it goes from there because, they, like I said, they played the New England Patriots after this game, and that's it. 
and then it's gonna be live like Memorex, baby. So if, until then, just your boy Live Watch Sports Media. You know what it is. Until the next video, continue to like, comment, subscribe, like the ticket shows down there, and I'm out. Hey, so amazing. Uh, you see how they playing? Uh, live wire. It's all about sports and entertainment. Uh, you don't want to miss it. So official, like you never seen. Keep it going till the whistle blowing from the referee. Uh, everything from highlights and stats. You know that we got to run it back. Whether on the field or the court. You know that this is where it's at. Uh, subscribe, no delaying. Uh, this is live wire. Uh, sports and entertainment. Let's go. Hey.